الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين ما الذي رجال الله أعينون بعون الله وكون عونا لنا بالله صلى الله فضل الله من السيد السلطان السيد الشيخ عبد الله فائز داغستاني السلطان الأولياء السيد الشيخ محمد الناظم عادل الحقاني ما الذي السيد الشيخ محمد عادل الرباني رجال الله أعينون بعون الله وكون عونا لنا بالله عسى نحظى بفضل الله Maybe you should put a reminder people forget on the group to the link maybe أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد الفاتح لما أغلق والخاتم لما سبق ناس الحق بالحق والهادي إلى سراتك المستقيم اللهم صل عليه صلاة تنجينا بها من جميع الأهوال والآفات وتقدرنا بها جميع الحاجات طهرنا بها من جميع السيئات فعنا بها عندك أعلى الدرجات وأن أقصى الغيات من جميع الخيرات في الحياة وبعد الممات ما شاء الله كان وما لم يشأ لم يكن أعلم أن الله على كل شيء قدير وأن الله قد أحاط بكل شيء علمه الحمد لله We are in holy month, in holy days إن شاء الله coming to Ashura which is Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad is the day of heavenly support, divine support reaching reaching the <laughs> we have a very uh, very uh, lively guest tonight <laughs> he's reading MashaAllah. Alhamdulillah, good. MashaAllah. So today, inshallah, on Sunday we will have a day of Ashura and we'll speak, uh, inshallah, furthermore about about this, the value, the things that happen in this month, especially the sacrifices of Ahlul Bayt in this month, especially Sayyidina Al Hussein, Abu Abdullah Al Hussein. And we will, inshallah, on Sunday, uh, read the names of the Shuhada of Karbala and seek their intercession with Sayyidina Muhammad Wasallam and with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They are people of high stature, high, magnificent. Uh, they've reached magnificent heights. They've sacrificed everything. And in the most difficult moments and the diff most difficult trials, they were steadfast in their uh, devotion to the religion of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad Sayyidina al Hussein watched his entire family uh, massacred and he what what affliction that is. Who can do this? Who can do this? Who can knowingly take his, whole, his family to a place where he knows people are seeking to harm him and to harm himself in order for him not to sign off on falsehood? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala raised him higher and grant and grant us something of inheritance to be from 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 that inheritance of Sayyidina Al Hussein, from which he inherited from his grandfather, who said, "If you put the sun in my right hand and the moon in my left hand, I will not leave this affair that Allah has entrusted to me." He is inheriting from that reality. So, in Sayyidina Al Hussein's case. He says, even if it meant losing his life, his comfort, even losing his family, in upholding what is true, it's a sacrifice that he didn't flinch to give. That is, these are mountains of human beings. These are not ordinary human beings. Sayyidina Al-Hussein, Sayyidina Al-Hassan, Sayyidina Ali, all Ashab of Prophet Sallallahu Sayyidina Umar, Sayyidina Uthman, Sayyidina Abu Bakr as-Siddiq. وَمَا أَدْرَاكَ مَا الصِّدِّيقِ 
tonight I wanted to devote something because it's we know we didn't we didn't get to speak about the hijrah of Prophet وسلم, and we didn't get to speak about the reality of this hijrah. In it is a special a special matter for us Naqshbandis because it pertains to what happened in the cave of Thawr. When Sayyidina Muhammad وسلم, was given the permission to leave Mecca to Medina, it was on the 27th of Safar. It's not the first of Hijrah that he left. Hijrah started on the first uh, of uh, Muharram, but Sayyidina Muhammad وسلم, actually made the uh, Hijrah on the 27th of Rabi of uh, Safar al Khair, and he reached on the 12th of Rabi' al Awwal. His stopped in the, the Ghar of Thawr. On the way, and the scholars of Hadith and scholars of Tafsir, they say that Sayyidina Muhammad وسلم, was running away from the unbelievers. Alaykum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. So they, the, in, in most books of tafsir, they say that our Prophet وسلم, and his companion Sayyidina Abu Bakr al-Siddiq were running away from the unbelievers who sought to kill Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This is what is on, on the... On the outside of things, this, is, this seems to be what happened. His Prophet wanted to go to Medina, and there's these people that wanted to kill him, so he hid in a cave to avoid them. But the reality and logic says otherwise. This is Prophet wasallam, who was waiting for the permission from Allah to move to Medina. And once that permission came, he left and went to Sayyidina Abu Bakr Siddiq and he said, Now is the time, Sayyidina Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu anhu arda, Allah honored him with that suhbah on that night. They say that the verse, إِذْ أَخْرَجَهُمَا إِذْ أَخْرَجَهُمَا ثَانِيَ اثْنَيْنِ إِذْ هُمَا فِي الْغَارِ That he was the second to Prophet وسلم, in the cave. They say that verse no other companion reached in stature than Sayyidina Muhammad وسلم, in that in that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is describing him in that verse as the companion of Prophet in the cave. So Prophet وسلم, left with his companion, left his cousin in his bed, a young man, Sayyidina Ali. We're talking about the sacrifices of Ahlul Bayt. Sayyidina Ali flinched when he laid in the bed of Sayyidina Muhammad وسلم, knowing there's 80, 70, 70 men outside lurking. Did he think about his life? Did he think about his future? He sama'na wa ata'na. But Sayyidina Muhammad وسلم, when he left, he opened the door, walked outside his house, recited the verse from Surah Yasin took a handful of dust, threw it at, put it at the heads of, of each of these people that were waiting outside his door and walked outside and they didn't see him. He's al masoon He is, Wallahu ya'asimuka min nas Allah said, Allah safeguard you. When, he, when that verse came, he had, a, he had a guard outside, Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He went outside, he said, you can go home. Allah is saying, I am safeguarding you. I am protecting you. Who can approach? When, when, uh, when uh, Abu Jahl put, uh, dug a hole in front of his house to, and called Sayyidina Muhammad وسلم, and it said, <laughs> Prophet came and uh, nothing happened. He didn't... Uh, Push Sayyidina Muhammad. Is it a hole or a rock? I'm not sure from the seerah. 
that he wanted to kill Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And he was so nice to him and very courteous to Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So when he left, the companions of Abu Jahl said, what happened? He saw, I saw a dragon open his mouth <laughs> behind Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. If I had made a move, it was ready to... This is Prophet. He's going to run to a cave from the unbelievers when he has such protection. So what is the wisdom of going to the cave and staying there for three nights with his dearest companion, Sayyidina Abu Bakr Siddiq, radiallahu anhu wa arda. Our shaykhs say that, that the spiritual reality that is lasting till judgment day of, of the spiritual inheritance being deposited from Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam into the heart of Sayyidina Abu Bakr Siddiq and from his heart to all the hearts of the Mashaykh happen in that cave. Because the verse is Illa Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad Illa yansuruka faqad nasaraka Allah Allah says to him إذ أخرجك الذين كفروا ثاني اثنين إذ هما في الغار He says he says they didn't, they didn't support you, Allah is supporting you. When the, the unbelievers uh, exiled you from, from your uh, home, you and your companion who ended up in the cave, إِذْ يَقُولُ لِصَاحِبِهِ لَا تَحْزَنْ Sayyidina Abu Bakr Siddiq, when he, they reached the Ghar, he asked Prophet Sallallahu to go and make sure there are Nothing, no snakes, scorpions, whatever. So to clean it and make sure. And then he asked Prophet ﷺ to come and he laid his cloth for him. And then Prophet ﷺ was tired and Sayyidina Abu Bakr Siddiq, he laid on the, on the thigh of Sayyidina Abu Bakr Siddiq and Sayyidina Abu Bakr Siddiq was crying and Prophet ﷺ said, إِذْ يَقُولُ لِسَحْبِهِ لَا تَحْزَنْ إِنَّ اللَّهَ مَعَنَا he said, we are, you know who, are, who is the third in, in this cave with us? Allah is with us. Don't be afraid. Don't be sad. And Sayyidina Abu Bakr wasn't afraid. Sayyidina Abu Bakr was fani, was a man who has completely ceased to exist. He was only, reflect, he was only a reflection of his beloved, nothing else. So he was not sad for himself. He was worried because he said to Prophet ﷺ in the hadith, he said, if any one of them look down at his feet, they will see us. They came so many times. He said, if they just look down, they will see us. So, the, the following verses speak about the reality of Sayyidina Abu Bakr Siddiq Fana. إِذْ يَقُولُ لِصَاحِبِهِ لَا تَحْزَنْ إِنَّ اللَّهَ مَعَنَا فَأَنزَلَ اللَّهُ سَكِينَتَهُ عَلَيْهِ وَأَيَّدَهُ بِجُنُودٍ لَمْ تَرَوْهَا Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brought his sakina, his, his, his divine peace upon... Now, there are two of them in the ghar. And he said, ثَانِيَ ثَنَيْنِ إِذْ هُمَا فِي الْغَار But when he's... The following verse, فَأَنزَلَ اللَّهُ سَكِينَتَهُ عَلَيْهِ On one. Allah brought that sakina. On one, on you, on, on Prophet ﷺ. No mention of Sayyidina Abu Bakr Siddiq. Why Sakina didn't come to Sayyidina Abu Bakr? Only on Sayyidina Muhammad. But this, some of Ahlillah, some of Arifin, they say it's an indication that Sayyidina, Sayyidina Abu Bakr doesn't exist <laughs> in the presence. So when Allah is saying, Anzal Allahu Sakinatahu Alayhi, means on both of them. But there's no Abu Bakr in that cave. There's only the beloved. صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم وأيده بجنود لم تروها. so the Naqshbandi طريقة our مشايخ informed us that in that cave the reality of ختم الخواجعان the ذكر that we do was was revealed to the heart of صديق from سيدنا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم. And that Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ordered Sayyidina Abu Bakr Siddiq to call all the souls 
the realities, the spiritual realities of all those who will follow in those ways to that cave. Every single one who is attached to this tariqah was there present to receive that khatam and that dhikr. And they say if no one, if a person is, was not in that cave, they cannot come to the dhikr, to the actual dhikr. Anyone who wasn't attending there, their spiritual <laughs> wasn't attending, they cannot be in a real khatm al-khawaj again. That is, that is the truth. We believe our teachers with certainty. Because when Suraka was chasing, Suraka was a marksman, he was, he was an expert swordsman. He was a man that people, if they want something done, they'll go to him and say, and when he heard there's a hundred camel waiting for Prophet, uh, if, if, if they bring Prophet dead or alive from Quraysh, he went after. Somebody said, I saw a silhouette of a few people and I think it is Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And he was sitting in the majlis and he said, no, 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 this is such and such. But he knew it was them, but he didn't want anybody else to chase. He wanted the reward. And then he went, told his daughter, bring my horse to this place. I'll meet you there so no one sees me leaving. And he went. And when he approached, as soon as he got close to Sayyidina Muhammad, and this is amazing, Prophet Sayyidina Abu Bakr Siddiq was sometimes riding behind Prophet, didn't know what to do with himself. Sometimes riding on the right, on the left, in the front, because he was thinking maybe they'll come from the front. And Prophet Sallallahu was in such tranquility. It is said that when Sayyidina uh, Suraqa was, was approaching, Sayyidina Abu Bakr was looking behind and getting ready. Prophet ﷺ, not once did he look. He was moving. And as soon as he approached, the, the closer he approached, the, every time he will get close, the horse's feet will sink in the sand. Once, twice, three times until he was, he was a kayis, he was understanding. He said, this is not normal. Then he, yeah, he called upon them. He said, can I draw near? I will not harm you. And then he went to Prophet Sallallahu He said, he says, I know now you're a prophet. This is not, is there anything? I'll give you my food, whatever you need. They said, we don't need anything from you, O Suraqa. But when you go back, tell people that we're not on this way. He went, and every time he sees, he says, I just came from there. There's nobody in that area. And then he said something to, to Sayyidina Suraqa. He said, Oh Suraqa, you will wear the bracelets of Kisra one day. This is somebody who is running away from anyone. Salawatu Rabbi wa salamu alayhi. So in that cave, the spiritual realities of the Naqshbandi way, the Khatm al Khawajagan, as was the spirituality of Sayyidina Abdul Khaliq al Ghujduwani. He is the one that's, that started in this world. In, in spirituality, it was started in that cave. In reality, it was started by the 11th Grand Sheikh of Grand Master, Sheikh Abdul Khaliq al Ghujduwani. That's why in, in our Ihda, we offer the Ihda to Sayyidina Abdul Khaliq al Ghujduwani. He was honored with that reality. This is the, the we were earlier talking about we as Muslims need to expand our, our understanding, our views. We, we are not made for this, this world. We are made for a different reality. We are made for This world is finishing quickly. But our reality in Akhirah is something else. And the followers of this magnificent um, Prophet وسلم, is not something small. We don't stop to really reflect about what it means to be a Muslim, a Muhammadan. But our connection to that Prophet وسلم, one day we will see. 
This is why we should be grateful for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that He granted us this honor. But we should also know that if Allah afflicts us in this world and tests us, it is not something to look down upon. We were talking earlier in Juma that Sayyidina uh, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Allahumma uh, salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad, أَكْثَرُ النَّاسِ ابْتِلَاءً الْأَنْبِيَاءِ ثُمَّ الْأَمْثَلْ فَالْأَمْثَلْ The most afflicted in creation are the prophets. Then, the higher the rank, the more affliction. This is such the word, because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants to show the, the reality of, of taslimiyyah. إِنَّ الدِّينَ عِنْدَ اللَّهِ الْإِسْلَامِ Who are these magnificent creation? That's why Prophet is the most afflicted, most tormented most tortured in dunya. And then the ranks under him. If you watch, Sayyidina Umar was assassinated. Sayyidina Uthman was assassinated. Sayyidina Ali was assassinated. Sayyidina Al-Hasan was assassinated. Sayyidina al Hussein was martyred with all his family. Why? Because Allah is not supporting them? No. Because of their magnificent rank. Sayyida Shuhada'i Ahli Al-Jannah. The, the wuzara of Sayyidina Muhammad وسلم, do you think it's going to be Allah is going to show to showcase their metal Allah is going to reveal the, 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 the gold from the silver from the tin from the copper how? through that affliction by showing you look look at the story of Sayyidina al Hussein. look at Sayyidina Umar Look at Sayyidina, uh, say, even Sayyidina Abu Bakr, he said he is Shahidul Mahabba. He is the martyr of love. They say he died Kamada. Means Kamada means out of his complete attachment to Prophet he couldn't be in this world. He was so devastated that even physically he separated from Prophet that his heart was, couldn't carry it. They would hear, they would hear like, zzz, like, and sometimes people who, who pray for him, with him, they would smell as if his, his, his flesh is burning from ishq. Not easy to be given that. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tried them severely in this world. So we have to learn ourselves that we shouldn't, we shouldn't be like any time that something happens, any time we are tested, that we will, we're shaken to our core. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us steadfast on the way and grant us to be with these alam. We are, we, Ya Rabbi Tawbah, Astaghfirullah, we are sinful ones. Don't try us, <laughs> don't try us more than, don't try us at all if we can. <laughs> we, don't, we don't want any. <laughs> Because we're weak ones. We are not uh, able to carry. Wa min Allahi tawfiq bi hurmati al-habib bi hurmati al-fatiha.